in this special um, edition of um, postpartum um, hemorrhage supplement, we have um, you know connected with um, uh, you know research groups on postpartum hemorrhage, focusing on issues around um, policy, practice, um, innovations, um, medicines in the pipeline. And, 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 and a lot of results have been presented um, that will be useful in moving this um, issue forward to try and improve the quality of care to women in low, in middle and low income countries and reduce the morbidity and mortality from postpartum hemorrhage. We wrote this uh, framing paper and the statement to support the WHO guidelines on postpartum hemorrhage. WHO very nicely in their guidelines uh, have outlined very important different ways how to do. And they also gave good hints what to do actually if the big standard which we all do, like for example, giving oxytocin directly after birth for the prevention of postpartum bleeding is not possible because oxytocin needs a cool change. It has to be kept in a, in a fridge and not everywhere in the world there's a fridge. Imagine a, a bus at home. So WHO also outlined, for example, when to use misoprostol, which is a heat stable drug, or when to use uh, carbitocin, which is also a heat stable um, uh, in injectable. A very interesting also new drug, be uh, which uh, be uh, is on the way to be introduced in many of uh, the setting is uh, tranexamic acid, which is a drug which we can use if postpartum bleeding is actually happening. It's also very cheap. It doesn't need a cool chain. And it's now important that it really gets out to the hospitals, to the health facilities uh, all over the world. And uh, FIGO and also the International Confederation of the Midwives are two societies which are very determined to help the rollout. One of the very, very key lessons that we learned earlier on in the project is that political will working in any country is very, very important. And that also goes with understanding the context at country level. Uh, being able to build relationships with ministries of health and within the different departments, within the health, uh, the Ministry of Health, and learning the structure of where different um, policies are drawn within the countries was very, very important. But uh, we cannot underscore that uh, political will um, determines whether you will succeed or um, you may not be successful in the project, especially where policy change is concerned. This paper, we investigate the quality of oxytocin and tranamic acid products that are used in the facilities during the emotive study, which is conducted by the University of Birmingham. In total, we collected 17 unique products, oxytocin products, of which six of them, 35%, are of good quality. In case of TXA, we identified nine unique products. Of those, seven products are of good quality. We found high numbers of substandard oxytocin products, 65% of the ones that we investigated, which is of great concern. And in addition, those TXA samples in which we found high impurity peaks, that is also worrying. And we feel that more niche research is required in the near future. We surveyed 28 health facilities that included state and federal health facilities. And our findings were mainly that postpartum hemorrhage has a huge variation across Nigerian facilities. It was also quite evident that 50% of our facilities had oxytocin that did not have the right qualification in terms of the stringent uh, regulatory authority. And only about two thirds of the facilities had tranexamic acid stuck in the facility. We also had as low as 50% of the facilities had access to, uh, to uh, intensive care 
uh, uh, unit. And only a fifth of our facilities had guidelines for treating postpartum hemorrhage. Now, this really shows that, you know, a postpartum hemorrhage is still a huge uh, burden in Nigeria, which is one of the low resource uh, countries. And there is need that we provide, you know, more comprehensive emergency obstetric care to our women that access our, our facility. Currently, tranexamic acid is recommended to be given as an intravenous injection. This requires specialist training and equipment. And although intravenous tranexamic acid is the treatment of choice for postpartum hemorrhage, this route is not an option for tens of thousands of women giving birth at home or lower level facilities. The World Health Organiz Organization now strongly recommend that early use of tranexamic acid for the treatment of postpartum hemorrhage in addition to standard care. It also recommends that tranexamic acid should be used in all cases of postpartum hemorrhage, regardless of the cause of bleeding and in all levels of health systems. But recognizing the limitation of giving tranexamic acid intravenously, the WHO also called for urgent research to establish the benefits and potential harms of alternative routes to give uh, TXA. So in our publication, we reviewed information on progress being made on identifying alternative routes to tranexamic acid. Our bottom line is tranexamic acid by intra intramuscular injection appears to be extremely favorable as an alternative to intravenous administration. Additionally, giving tranexamic acid by intramuscular injection is easier and quicker than intravenous because there's no need for cannulation, which takes time, or to give the injection, which needs to be given slowly over about 10 minutes. It can be performed by nursing and other appropriate healthcare professionals who are not allowed to give intravenous drugs. Our paper on postpartum hemorrhage discusses the historic and current research and development pipeline for medicines for the prevention and management of postpartum hemorrhage. We found that over the last 20 years, there have only been 39 medicines in development for postpartum hemorrhage. This is a small amount. For example, if we look at another high priority maternal condition, preterm birth, there were 178 candidate medicines in development over this same time period. There was a high proportion of candidates that were reformulations of the uterotonic oxytocin in the postpartum hemorrhage pipeline. In addition, we found that compared to other high priority maternal conditions, there was a very small number of candidates in preclinical development or early phase one clinical trials. This shows us that despite remaining one of the leading causes of maternal mortality globally, there is a lack of discovery science for new medicines to prevent or treat postpartum hemorrhage. So I hope you will enjoy reading this. Um, all of these articles, an opportunity for us to continue the debate, to learn, to implement the standards and the key recommendations to reduce morbidity and mortality from postpartum hemorrhage.